Hello there, this is Out Motorsports. My name is Jake and this is the 2021 Toyota RAV4 Prime. Toyota's RAV4 has been incredibly popular as a crossover in the larger crossover segment ever since it came out in the early to mid 1990s. And this fifth generation RAV4 has been no exception, of course. Now, when Toyota first introduced this vehicle in 2019, it was available first as a gasoline only model. And then shortly thereafter, they introduced a RAV4 hybrid, which is a traditional hybrid setup that you would see, for example, in a Toyota Prius. Now for the 2021 model year, Toyota has taken this RAV4 and they have changed the drivetrain just a little bit to add one more option for buyers. And it is in the form of a plug-in hybrid. That is what Prime stands for in the Toyota lineup. They have this RAV4 Prime and they have a Prius Prime and both of those are plug-in hybrid vehicles. So let's talk about what's different as a plug-in hybrid version of the RAV4 talk about how it compares to the regular hybrid, and then we'll get it out on the road and see how it is to drive. Now, before we get into all this too, too much, please take a second, subscribe to the channel if you're not already. Be sure to turn on that notification bell. We've got a lot more videos coming with new cars, new trucks, a bunch of fun with older cars and trucks as well. And you really don't wanna miss anything else that's coming up. So please take a second and subscribe, and we really appreciate all that support. Now with that, what is this 2021 RAV4 Prime? Well. Toyota started with the regular hybrid version of the RAV4, which is rated pretty good for fuel economy, both on the highway and in the city. It's rated for something like 40 miles a gallon in the city, 36-ish on the highway, and about 38 miles per gallon combined. That's all pretty good. But what if you live somewhere where your daily commute or your daily driving needs are not all that far? Most Americans would say that this applies to them. They drive less than 50 miles a day. Well, Toyota changed things up a little bit and they added an 18 kilowatt battery pack to this RAV4. And what that does, combined with some more powerful electric motors, gives you an all wheel drive crossover that can go 42 miles of official range on battery power alone. And that's not 42 miles of putzing around at parking lot sort of speeds, that's 42 miles up to highway speed. This RAV4 will do 80 something miles an hour on battery power alone. And I mentioned it's all wheel drive, that is the case. Toyota does not only have an electric motor on the front axle, they've got a second electric motor on the rear axle. There's no drive shaft or differential going between the two axles here. It is a fully electric all wheel drive setup. So saves a little weight, saves a little complexity mechanically, and it's just all linked via computers and software. So as far as how the RAV4 Prime is compared to the RAV4 Hybrid, this is the fun part. This is actually the second fastest vehicle in a straight line from zero to 60 in the Toyota lineup, except for the Toyota Supra. That's a really interesting, kind of quirky, fun fact about the RAV4 Prime. Of course, power is not the end all be all, but more power certainly never hurt anyone. The total combined power output of this 2021 RAV4 Prime is 302 horsepower. That's 83 more horsepower than you'd get from a RAV4 hybrid of the same model year, which is a pretty big bump. So if you're gonna have your vehicle loaded down with family or things all the time, you may want that extra 83 horsepower. Now, the other benefit, like I mentioned, is the fully electric driving. And the RAV4 Prime can go up to 42 miles, according to Toyota, on batteries by itself. Now, one of my buddies who runs another YouTube channel called Redline Reviews actually bought his own RAV4 Prime a few months ago, and he's actually been getting a few more miles per charge than Toyota says he would. He confirmed that he's getting 45 or 46 miles per battery charge out of his personal RAV4 Prime, which means for most of his driving, he doesn't even have to use that 2.5 liter gasoline engine that's stuck under the hood up here. Of course, if your driving is going to exceed that 42-ish mile range, you don't have to do anything special. The car takes care of all of it for you. You can drive this car more or less as a completely normal hybrid vehicle and not even think about where the power is coming from and just drive it. I mentioned you would want to charge this RAV4 Prime at home, and that is the biggest differentiator between how this works versus the regular hybrid RAV4. The regular RAV4 hybrid does not have any sort of charging port on the side of the car. 
And in fact, it only has the one gas door, which is on the driver's side. But if you notice, as I go back here, there is actually a charging port right here. So the RAV4 Prime has two charging doors, and this one has the plug for your electric charger. Now, Toyota gives you a standard charger that will plug into your regular 120 volt wall outlet that you have in your garage or in the front of your house. And that will recharge the RAV4 Prime's battery from 0% to 100% in about 12 hours. Sounds like a lot of time because it is, but it's important to remember that you're not relying on charging speed because you're not gonna be using the RAV4 Prime exclusively on battery all the time. If your battery is very, very low or completely dead, the car just runs as a hybrid, so there's nothing to worry about. However, if you would like to charge faster, either at home or while you're out, you can use what's considered a level two charger, which runs on 240 volts. And in the case of the RAV4 Prime, as with any electric vehicle, you have to think about charging speed. The minimum speed that every RAV4 Prime will charge at on a level two charger is 3.3 kilowatts, which is again, not very fast. Many brand new full electric vehicles can charge at speeds of 150 kilowatts. So 3.3 is really pretty slow. Toyota says at 3.3 kilowatts, this vehicle will charge again from zero to 100 in about four and a half hours. Now, if you get the XSE Premium, which is what this RAV4 Prime is, that's the top trim, one of the benefits you get of choosing that premium package on the XSE is a faster onboard charger. The charging speed of an electric car is generally set by the vehicle's electronics and not necessarily by the charger. Obviously, the charger has to be able to supply enough juice, but the vehicle's electronics also determine how fast this thing can be charged. And when you get the XSE with the premium package, you will be able to charge at 6.6 .6 kilowatts, which still is not that fast. However, if you go to most level two chargers that are not considered DC fast chargers, they will do 6.6 .6 kilowatts. So at the very least, you can charge at the full speed provided by a lot of these free chargers or cheap chargers that are poking around at grocery stores and shopping malls and things like that. So you can get a few miles of range while you are parked and shopping or wandering around. Now, if you're on a 6.6 .6 kilowatt level two charger, you can charge this vehicle's battery from zero to 100% in two and a half hours. Now with all that, Let's get behind the wheel and see how this thing is to drive. Like I said, it's the fastest thing to 60 in a straight line from Toyota, minus the Supra, but numbers aren't everything. Is this really a sporty version of the RAV4 with 302 horsepower, or is it just a very fast RAV4 that's kind of a RAV4 beyond that? Let's find out. All right, so I'm gonna start this video by starting the RAV4, which is normally not going to be a very interesting occurrence, except if you're used to getting behind the wheel of a RAV4 and pushing the start button or turning the key, this is going to be an odd experience. Put your foot on the brake, push the start button. That's it. It's on now. It's ready to go. We're just, we're just here. We're going to drive it as an electric car. There are two buttons here next to the shifter that are important to know for the operation of the RAV4 Prime compared to a hybrid. The first one says auto EV slash HV. Now EV obviously means electric vehicle, HV means hybrid vehicle. So you can push this button and the car will run completely on its own as a hybrid with a lot of battery assist. It'll determine when it's best on its own to use just the batteries and it'll determine when it wants to turn on the gasoline engine. There's also a button next to the shifter that lets you choose between hybrid mode and electric mode. Say your commute only requires 30 miles of range and you can charge the office. Well, run it as a full EV. You don't need the gas motor to ever, ever come on. So you can use this button and switch between the two. The final thing before we get moving is let's say I know I'm getting to a place where I really want to have a little more electric only range, but I'm not going to be near a charger. Well, if you push and hold, this button that lets you choose between electric and hybrid operation, it will run the gas engine full time to not only propel the car, but also act as a generator to charge the battery. So you push and hold, and it will blink charge mode, and then you'll hear the gas motor come on. The gas motor does have to work a lot harder to move the car at this point because it's also diverting some of its power to charge the batteries while you're trying to scoot around. So you'll see the power gauge shoot all the way up into the power range. It's not really a tachometer, but it'll shoot towards the top because it is working fairly hard. We're gonna start off, I'm gonna turn this back to full electric mode 
We're gonna start off as a full EV and then we'll put it into hybrid mode and we'll see the power differences between the two. And I mentioned this is the fastest accelerating Toyota from zero to 60. That is only the case when you've got the vehicle in hybrid mode. When it's in electric mode like this, it's not gonna be making a ton of power and torque because you're losing everything that that 2.5 liter gasoline four cylinder will produce to help you out. It's not slow, but you certainly have this initial surge of torque off a line from a stoplight or thereabouts. And then once you get moving, you can put your foot down and it will pick up speed, but it's not, it's not super duper punchy that you're probably looking for. Uh, it's not gonna feel like a Tesla when you've got it in full electric mode because the, the motors just don't make that much power and torque. I'll go ahead and punch it from a stop in full electric mode. You heard some stuff get thrown back there on that initial torque surge. And once you get past that initial torque surge, it still accelerates, but it's a very linear acceleration rate. It's not gonna be this exponential curve with you know a ton of power and torque past that surge up to about 35, 40 miles an hour. It will still accelerate. I believe Toyota says the top speed of this on full electric mode is about 87 miles an hour, and it will do that. It, it will get you there. However, if you're looking for maximum acceleration down an on-ramp or something, you will want it in hybrid mode. And the car does not put itself in hybrid mode on its own if you keep the throttle floored. So back there, I had the throttle all the way to the floor in the carpet, and it was staying in full electric mode which is by design. They do that on purpose because you have told the car you want it to run as a full EV. Now, if I put the car in the hybrid mode here and push the button for HV, now I have forced it into hybrid mode. We're not gonna say automatic do your thing because this would be for scenarios where you absolutely want all the power that you could get from the four cylinder on top of your electric motor. So it'll still run as a full electric. That's what it's doing right now. But I'm gonna get over here and we're gonna start going up a little bit of a hill and just like in another hybrid, like a Prius, now I just felt that gas motor kick on. Doesn't really feel any different at light acceleration like this. And I do have to commend Toyota on making the transition in and out of using the gasoline motor very, very smooth. They've had a lot, a lot, a lot of time to do this and perfect it and make it good, starting with the first ever Prius. It's the same sort of feeling. It's a very smooth transition whether the motor is turning on or off. Car can always start off in full electric and then as that gas motor kind of spins up and drops off, it's really, not imperceptible, but it's almost imperceptible. You do feel a little bit of vibration through the floor, but if you've got your music going, that's pretty much the only thing that you'll notice, and that's only if you're really paying attention for it. Now, the interesting thing here is as I go up some little hills and I put my foot down just a little bit to maintain speed or accelerate slightly, the gas motor doesn't change in pitch, which is telling me it's, it's only supplying so much power and the electric motor is doing most of the work. We will come up here and we'll take an on-ramp We'll have a little bit of a chance to give it full or fuller throttle and get that 302 horsepower in a straight line. Of course, as we're coming up to this, I'm gonna have to slow down. The braking will add range. It is still regenerative braking like any other hybrid. And you will see the charge indicator show that you're, you're adding a little bit of juice back to the battery. It's not gonna add enough to make a market difference. But again, as with saving weight in cars, every little bit counts. All right, now we're waiting for a gap here. I've got traffic stacked up behind me, so we will have to punch it. This is a, an emergency safety maneuver. As soon as I get this Jeep ahead of me, let's do it. The interesting thing, I don't know if you could hear it on the video, but I got the teeniest, cutest little bit of wheel spin out of the front left tire there, just for a half a second as it and, and hooked up the, the, the RAV4 will absolutely light up the inside tire if you've got the wheel turned at all and you give it full throttle or even heavy throttle through a low speed turn. Say, leaving a stoplight, turning hard left or hard right, it will squeal the tires and everyone will wonder what just did that. Now again, that was pretty quick in a straight line. This does weigh about 4,300 pounds, so it's, you know, it's, it's quick to 60. It's about 5.7 seconds, according to Toyota. I believe car and driver managed to get it a little quicker than that. But either way, this is not sports car acceleration, but it's also not slow. Even five, 10 years ago, five point something seconds to 60 would have been considered really quick. 
And this is a family crossover. Is this really a sporty version of the RAV4 or is it just a powerful version of the RAV4? There is a difference and really in this case it's the latter. Much like pickup trucks that have an abundance of power and, and seem perhaps quick or even fast on paper, this is good amounts of power. It makes it feel quick. It makes it feel more than acceptable if you're looking to shoot a gap, go down an on-ramp, whatever you're doing. If you need power, there's power in reserve here with this RAV4 Prime driving as a full hybrid with that 302 horsepower. Is the RAV4 Prime the RAV4 sports edition? No. Uh, it's on 19-inch wheels. It's the only way you can get a 19-inch wheel is to have the Prime, but it's still riding on whatever all-season tires. It's got you know, whatever for brakes. Nothing in here is really designed for performance. The suspension is designed for ride comfort over all else, which ride comfort is pretty good, especially in the city when you've got some really pockmarked roads. The ride comfort's great. I do think having the little bit of extra weight in here versus a non-prime RAV4 helps out. You've got all that weight. It's certainly down low because of where the battery pack is mounted. And it, it handles fine but this is not a sports car. And I do think that plug-in hybrids, they're, they're commonly abbreviated PHEVs, plug-in hybrid electric vehicle. I do think they have their place right now. I don't think these are necessarily going to be the end-all be-all solution for all Americans forever. But for the, the interim here where a lot of Americans would love to own a plug-in vehicle, that they can drive on battery some of the time, but perhaps not all of the time. This is a pretty good option. All right, and that is it for this review of the 2021 Toyota RAV4 Prime. Thank you so much for coming along today. As always, if you like what we're up to, please subscribe to the channel, like this video, and make sure to turn on that notification bell so you don't miss anything that is coming down the pike. You can also find us on Facebook and Instagram at OutMotorsports and at our website, OutMotorsports.com. We've got a whole community of LGBT automotive enthusiasts and motorsports competitors over there. So please head on over and connect with the rest of us. We would love to meet you. In the meantime, please stay safe, be well, and we'll see you again soon.